Hi there. Today is Saturday, July 9th, 2022. And that makes this the week 27 Create Brilliance podcast with your hostess, Jennifer Vanderbeek of scrapsoflife.com. How are you doing? So <clears throat> this week, wow, I kind of I kind of feel like I don't know where this week went, and yet I know exactly where the week went, and it feels like there's just so much going on, and yet it's all in a very big global way, and I think I might, it's like I know it's there, and I am I still feel like I'm wrapping my head around a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world right now. Um. There are opportunities for brilliance out there, but wow, um, I, I am definitely feeling like I just need to be like tiny and small and me right now, <laughs> just, just me. Um, so that's my reaction to like everything right now. Um. Wow, I didn't even plan to start out that way. I really didn't, but apparently that's where we started. So, <laughs> hi. Um, <laughs> so, in the very tiny corner of the world that is mine, um, I've had a good week. I've spent a lot of time working on book four. I am happy with the changes I'm making to the first half to kind of and fix and round that out more. Um, the first half is not finished. <laughs> this is the second pass, fixing the glaring bits that, you know, oh, fixing the glaring gaps, um, condensing some stuff, expanding others, stuff like that. But it'll take at least a third read through with a different point of view, a different perspective of what I'm looking for is like, you know, the smaller details um, to make sure they're they are in place before um, I do like the spelling and grammar checks and send it off for beta readers. Um, so that's that I spent a good amount of time on this week. I'm feeling very good about the progress so far with that. Also, if you're signed up on my newsletter list, then you should have gotten your newsletter on the fifth. If you didn't, check your spam folder, all that stuff. Um, I am encouraged by how many people opened the email. I'm always, you know, I always kind of click for several days afterwards. I, I refresh the stats and see what my percentages are. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a reasonable percentage. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, because I know we all get so much email, right? And I, you know, it is what it is. And it, but email is still that best way to con, con uh, keep in contact with people. So do email. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I have to share as far as creativity goes, because that is, of course, you know, the big thing. Um, oh, I have two more things, actually. Um, one is that I did successfully change my Twitch stream schedule. It's now Wednesdays and Fridays, um, three to five, uh, Eastern. And, um, that change worked out really well. <clears throat> it took a little bit of getting used to, even for me. Um, but it felt good to have those items on those days rather than trying to shoehorn it in when um, on Tuesdays, uh, Tuesday mornings before I go to work. Um, and then Thursdays were fine, but still, I think it's better on, on Fridays. And that just kind of leaves me Thursday as a day when I'm usually not working and I can go and run errands if I need to. It kind of leaves me one full day kind of in the middle of all of that if I need to do that or if it's just a day at home that I can really kind of focus and drill down into a project. <clears throat> I am continuing to work on the uh, Murph Oak Zodiac. Um, I got, I finished up Sagittarius and now um, I started drawing Capricorn. Capricorn is drawn but not colored. Um, we'll see if by Wednesday he's colored and if not then I'll color him on stream then um, before I start Aquarius. Uh, so that is moving along. I still don't know what I'm going to do with those those drawings. They have been they have been more a source of experimentation and 
I won't, I wouldn't say like no holds barred or anything like that creativity, but they've just kind of, because they were not for this project or this outcome, I was just, I was just drawing and having fun. And even though I had planned to release a coloring slash activity book in July, I'm kind of glad, well, in June, I'm kind of glad that I didn't do that because I feel like I needed that time. I needed that that time to kind of experiment a little bit and just draw for fun. And also I learned a couple of things. I learned a couple of things um, that I think will help uh, the functionality and usability of the digital artwork going forward for multiple, you know, uses. So there's that. Um, one of these days I will get around to uh, editing those videos and getting them up on up here on YouTube and, and wherever else they need to go. Um, but I'll keep you posted on how that's going. The other thing I did was I finished another project. I finished this uh, cowl. It is called the Goat Cowl. It's available on Ravelry. It was designed for um, the shop that I work at for um, a subscription box they did. But then, you know, the it is available elsewhere. I'm going to take it off so I can show you. <clears throat> the full thing um it's just it's a relatively simple shaping it's simple stitches it's knit and purl mostly um mostly purl <laughs> um and the the neat thing comes from the fact that you hold two yarns together throughout so this was the yellow and black the black and the gray the gray and the yellow on down to the gray and the black and the black and the yellow again. <clears throat> um, our shop sells kits. Uh, where I work sells uh, kits with seven different colors, six or seven different colors in it that you you know can work that through. Um, I picked my own colors for this and kind of experimented. It looks very it, it looks very Hufflepuff, doesn't it? <laughs> that was unintentional. But um, as you saw when I when I was wearing it, you know, the way it doesn't look so like defined stripey um, when you're wearing it because it kind of collects around you. And that's I love cowls for ease of wear. Um, so that that was fun. But no, I uh, I had cast this on. I didn't write down the date, I don't think um, I could check my planner, but I don't know if I wrote it down. But I cast it on, I know, before I went to Arizona, um, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't something I was going to take with me uh, because I was concentrating on the Poirot shawl. And while shawls are wonderful and amazing and they can just be absolute masterpiece works of art, um, they get a little fiddly when I go to wear them. So cowls are so much easier to wear. So I, I definitely want to make more cowls, more things that I don't have to like worry about pinning or tying or doing those things. That's just, that's a preference of mine. That's you know, but I, I'm still going to make scarves and, and stuff. I just need to pay attention to their dimensions so that I don't end up making another eight foot shawl that I, I'm, I'm going to have, you know, to, to architecturally wear kind of thing. Um, I need to concentrate on smaller shawls <laughs> that are easier to wear, especially here in South Georgia. So, um, but with that said, I did, I finished this see did I finish it I finished it Wednesday I blocked it Thursday no 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 no. I take that back I finished it Tuesday night I blocked it Wednesday I wove in the ends you know did all the finishing on Thursday and um so that I could bring it to the staff meeting on Friday um and then I wore it today but yeah I finished it and then the next morning I put it on the blocking boards I'm like who who even am I anymore because this is not the sort of thing that I do, um, but I'm I'm just getting so excited by finishing objects and and wanting to be able to wear them and having an excuse to wear them sometimes. Yeah, so I was really really happy. Also, I gave Todd his his anglerfish dice bag, and once I explained what it was, <laughs> he was quite thrilled with it. Um, so yay, that was good. And um, also I started 
the um, Crochet Guild of America's um, uh, certification program for the like fundamentals of crochet. Um, that is not something I have to do. Nobody has to do it. Um, and it's, I don't even know that it's like a prestige thing. It's just, it's, I'm doing it more to make sure that I've got my stuff together, you know, that I know what I'm doing when I'm serving as a reference, um, at work for crochet. And, uh, because most of my, you know, I was, I was taught by a grandmother when I was a child and then I've kind of pieced together bits and pieces as I've gone along. So I just want to make sure that there are things like I haven't missed or that, you know, it, check and make sure I'm not doing anything in a weird way that could confuse other people in the future. Because like, for instance, I have a private lesson with somebody coming up, um, you know, where I'm, I'm teaching them or, or going over the, you know, basics and stuff. They kind of already know, but yeah, anyway, yeah. If I'm going to be showing people and teaching people and, and, and helping people in that way, I want to make sure that, you know, my information is rock solid and there's so many different sources of information out there and finding out accidentally through happenstance, whatever, that there was a, that there are certification programs available through these guilds. I'm like, well, yeah, that's, that's a reasonable thing to do. Same thing as when I did the bar smarts program way back. Um, when I, when I came up with the idea to do like custom cocktails you know, I just wanted to be able to speak with more authority. And to me, that was how I did it. So it's the same thing. But I started on that this week. And so far, I mean, I've I've learned a, a couple of things already. Um, and, you know, expanded mostly. Well, I would say I've expanded on some things I already knew um, or had learned along the way. I've confirmed a bunch of things. And otherwise, um, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So yeah, that'll be kind of a fun thing to com complete and, and then it'll get reviewed and hopefully I will have done things correctly and, and I will have earned that certification. If not, then you fix and you resubmit, you know? Um, so yeah, that's the, the creative update for this week. Um, I've just been working on a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, nothing really to show, but things are in the works. Um, yeah, so that brings us to our, our lesson in brilliance or what, what did I call this? I know everything feels so lofty. Maybe I should just like double down and like completely buy into it. But you know me, <laughs> I, I, I am very careful not to take myself too seriously, <laughs> but sometimes I think maybe I go too far in the other direction. I don't know. I don't know. There we go. But um, I'm going to say that sometimes, that the lesson from this week is that sometimes brilliance is brutal. And what I mean by that is sometimes it's brutal truth in which we find the brilliance. It's sometimes it's the brutality of nature. And where we we see that brilliance, where we learn that bit of brilliance from. And sometimes it's the brutal schedule and pace we set for ourselves. It is not something that I would ever, ever suggest someone try to maintain indefinitely. That is the whole sprint versus marathon idea in practice. But there are times when you're up against deadlines, when you are, you know, when, when you're just in the thick of it and you don't know if you want to finish much, you know, continue much less finish. You don't know if you can. And there is that brutality within us that, that we force ourselves to just get it done. Um, but the thing about brutality is that often brutality is crude. So 
often what comes of those brutal moments is very crude and unrefined. And so we have to take what comes from that effort um, and, and then step back a moment and then try and refine it. We cannot, the brilliance isn't in the product of that brutality. It's in what we do. And I think, I think that goes for the world at large too, not just creative process, processes. When we see brutality in the world, when we witness it, when we hear about it, when, when, we, when we are confronted with it, we understand that the result of that brutality is a crudeness, an unrefined something. But in there is something, and this is not Pollyanna, this is not find the silver lining, this is how we go about making our daily lives better, not just for ourselves, but for anyone we can, um, is we don't have to agree with the brutality, we don't have to like the brutality, but once it's out there, once it's occurred, once it's happened, once it's once it's been learned, learned of, then what we do with it is where that brilliance comes from. What we do with it, how we react, how we take that next step. So in writing, you might push yourself to finish a manuscript, but it, and it could have been brutal. It could have been really taxing and just exhausting. You might have kept up an inhuman pace, um, gone without sleep, gone, you know, just whatever extremes you had to go to, to get it done. But it's crude and it needs refinement. The same thing when we are actions, sometimes we might lash out in anger and we might, we might be crude and brutal to the people around us. I'm not speaking about anybody in particular in my life, um, or myself at this point. I'm just just I just wanted to clarify nothing nothing like that has happened to me directly or anything like that but we all know what's going on in the world and so that brutality when when we lash out when we when we act out and it's not for us to say you know it, it, it's very difficult you know and a lot of times it's like that was not an appropriate response to you know x stimulus um, and that's that's a dangerous thing because you know we all have our limits. You know, I, I'm trying I'm trying to be vague and not speak on any one thing because I don't I don't want this to be polarizing. I don't want I I don't want I don't want to be you know I don't want to capitalize on the the stuff that's going on. But this is just my my take on it is if we can take what we learn and do better, if we can take the crude product of that brutality and refine it into something we can learn from and something we can better ourselves and the world around us with, that's where the brilliance lies in brutality. And again, not trying to put a happy face on it, not trying to excuse anything. Um, there are heinous things going on in the world. Um, but just like we can't control another person's actions or reactions, we can only control ourselves. And so in that same way, what's done is done. And we have to, we have to find a way to, to take that and do better. And some lessons are incredibly hard won. Some lessons have prices that the cost is priceless. Um, but when when those priceless costs uh, prices are paid um, by others. As a result of brutality, it's our responsibility, I think, one woman talking here, I think, to, to take a lesson from that. And sometimes it's how can we prevent that, you know, 
how can we prevent the brutality? Again, bringing it back in just to what happens on my desk. Well, if I have to really shove myself through and set a deadline and push myself to near burnout to get XYZ done, get a manuscript draft finished or something, well, I need to be better about getting myself the help or support or the environment that I need to be able to do that without having to take those measures. Just an example. And so in that small way, I'm trying to say that, that that's how we take those, those moments where we, a cost may have been extracted um, and, and try and make them into something better. Trying try and make that count so that we don't have to keep repeating the same the same brutality over and over again. We do not have to keep running this same path. They say that's the definition of of insanity. I don't I think that's more apocryphal than anything, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Those who do not learn from history are destined to repeat it. <laughs> Those who, you know, it's like we have to learn from our mistakes. And even though there's lessons of brilliance in brutality, brutality is not something that we can, it's not a well we can keep going to. It's one of those occasional things, or at least we hope it's an occasional thing. Otherwise, we're dysfunctional. And jokes aside of putting the fun in dysfunctional, I think we all want to function better. And I think we all want a world that functions better. So we start with ourselves. We start with our homes. We start with our towns. And go from there. So. Not like heavier than I. Anyway. In any way shape or form intended. But I'm going to let it stand. I thought for a moment there. That I was like you know what. I could just delete this and restart. And just cut out a bunch of this stuff. But I'm not going to. I'm going to let it stand. So yeah, as always, I say take care of yourself, be good to you, make time, make space for yourself, put your oxygen mask on yourself first, and then when you have the bandwidth, when you have the time, the inclination, and energy, do so for others. Um, I think it's important to make that time, energy, and so forth. Um, but, you know, we are ultimately responsible for ourselves. And, you know, obviously, if we have small children, we're responsible for them and so on and so forth. But you know what I mean? <laughs> As adults, we are responsible for ourselves, first and foremost, because we can't help anybody. We can't, we can't be brilliant if we're not taking care of ourselves, okay? And if we're seeking brilliance in some way, shape, or form in our lives, and why not? Why not? You know, why are we seek brilliance? Why not? So if we're seeking that, we have to give ourselves what we need to do that. We have to make that a priority. And in doing so, I think we automatically get better at helping other people at the same time. At being an inspiration, not saying that I am, but, you know, you know, you know kind of that whole thing of like, you never know who's watching. You never know when something you say might help somebody else. Um, you know, find their path, find their brilliance, find their whatever, whatever they're seeking. So just, we do our best for ourselves, we do our best for those around us, and we are never afraid to show the world our brilliance. So I wish that for you, and I will see you next week when hopefully I have even more finished objects to show you and, and, and more updates about the book and, and more wonderful experiences to share with you. All right. Take care. Be safe. Be well. Bye.